Good morning for those of you who are in Edmonton. Good afternoon for those of you who are in Ontario watching this. Oh, so I'm going to try and save some of my time from editing by doing a live video and um, see if I can't capture some of this networking 101 content that I learned yesterday at a Dale Carnegie um, workshop, I guess you would call it. So cool. There was about 40 people there. And um, yeah, let's get right into it. So networking 101. Things you need to do, sorry, approachability guidelines for networking opportunities. So, your reason for being there should not be to sell anything. Now, this threw me back at first because, you know, the purpose of me going to networking is to do business so that I can sell something so that I can stay in business and make money, right? So the reason you should not, your reason for being there should not to sell anything. And then they went on to tell why. So the reason you're there is to make relationships and friendships. Because even though the person you're meeting for the first time is not your potential customer or someone you want to do business with, they might know somebody or have friends who would fit your business model a lot better than they would. So you want to make sure that you're there for making those relationships and those friendships because you never know what other opportunities are going to happen in the future or down the road. You may decide to switch businesses and then they might be your target customer. So that is the reason why you should be at networking events. So the second thing they taught us there was to set a goal or outcome for the event. Now this makes sense to me because you don't want to go to a networking event um, like a deer in headlights. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know why you're there. You kind of, you know, you kind of stand out as a wallflower right away if you don't have a goal. If you have a simple goal as, you know, I'm going to meet three people or I'm going to get three names or five names of people that are at this event um, or talk about your favorite sport or find somebody who's the same hobby as you. Those are great goals to have just to keep your mind clear and you can come off a lot more confident when you are meeting people for the first time. So step number three, do your homework about the organization or event. And it was interesting at this um, workshop that somebody stood up and said why this could be a bad thing. Um, she just told a story about how someone <clears throat> went to a networking event without doing any research, just heard it was happening. And she found out that they had different core values than um, she did. So they had different religious values. And then so she was at this event with the wrong people. And so you want to make sure you do some research about the event before you go there. It also gives you sign of a, a kind of a topic to discuss. Um, because if you've done a little bit of research, you can say, oh, well, did it meet your expectations? You know, did... Did you like the event? So that is why you want to do some research. Number four, dress appropriately for the occasion. If the networking event is for a bunch of mechanics, do not show up with a shirt and tie. <laughs> Simple, right? Makes sense. So you want to even contact the um, organizer or the host of the event and find out what the dress code is. They probably put this on year after year or many times before and they can tell you what the Dress code is like what people usually wear, what they usually don't wear, so that you can be prepared and ready to not stick out like a sore thumb. <laughs> now, sticking out, uh, making yourself different from the group is okay to a point. Um, you kind of want to blend in, you kind of don't. So you want to blend in to the point where everybody feels like, oh, this is a comfortable, safe area. We can all get along. We can all open up. We can share. Um, but you want to stick out just a little bit so that it makes, makes you memorable, makes you unique. So, you know, having a certain pin or a certain type of tie or a little bit of color from your brand on, say, your shoes or so on and so forth. You don't want to go overboard, but you do want to just make it a little bit unique so that people will want to make something that would make you more approachable. To say, oh, I like your tie. Oh, I like your sunglasses. Or, oh, I like your... Your frames and then it kind of opens up a little bit more conversation so you see a little bit but try to blend in 
Number four, number five. This was new for me. I didn't realize this one before. Wear your name tag on the right side. So this is my right, this is your left. So on the right side, because you go in to shake hands with that person, their eyes are not gonna be obstructed by your hand or your arm when they look for your name. So you wanna always wear your name tag on the right side. That was new information for me. So number six, have a good handshake, smile, and use appropriate eye contact. So I don't think this makes sense in any social um, gathering, but um, business networking events, this is a little bit more, a little bit more crucial because you don't want to come off like a salesman. <laughs> you don't want to be overly content, confident. You don't want to be overly pushy. You don't want to, you know, stare people in the eye and, and kind of bring out this sort of ego if you have one you want to use appropriate eye contact you want to use appropriate smiles and appropriate handshakes you don't want to make this into um, a night out a club this is a business professional event you want to make a good first impression so you want to be social but you also don't want to overdo it number seven was interesting as well to help people remember your name use pause part punch when saying your name. So you will walk up to somebody and say, hello, my name is, give a brief pause and be a little bit bigger than normal because they'll go from shutdown mode because they've heard it all over before back into, oh, there's something going on different. So the brain kind of opens up a little bit. It pays a little more attention after that pause. And then you say your first name, my name's Michelle. Part you kind of want to do another little pause and then you want to say your last name with a bit of a punch. So my name, hi, my name is Michelle Froze. And you want to say that last part so that they can differentiate you from other Michelles in the room. So you want to do a pause part punch to help people remember your name. Number eight, introduce yourself with a bit of information appropriate to the occasion or the other person. So if you're going to a certain networking event that has to do with social media, you want to tell them, okay, um, maybe that's not a very good example. But if you want to go to, for example, this networking event, so you want to go to an event about networking, you want to tell them about yourself and how you're a sociable person. So you want to introduce yourself with a bit more information. So for example, my, um, because I'm a YouTube creator, I don't want to just walk up to people and say, hey, I'm a YouTube creator. I want to give them a little bit more information. So I say, I find interesting people and stories around the world in 2017 and document their stories in YouTube. So again, you give me a little bit more context about what you do. Number nine, have an exit strategy. So you can often find yourself talking to people who just like to gab, mostly because they're nervous, sometimes because they're so excited to be there and they have some information so much information they want to share so you want to kind of have an exit strategy it's a few phrases or something prepared ahead of time so you can kind of exit conversation so you can find someone else um and when you are preparing that exit strategy always be honest everybody has their bullshit radars are uh, their bullshit radars is so much higher nowadays than it used to be so Telling them, oh, I gotta go to the washroom, or oh, I gotta take this phone call and not really take this phone call, you're gonna give off that vibe that you're lying. Always be honest when you're giving an exit strategy, you know. And you, you can cut them off mid sentence if you heard enough. And just be honest, you know, hey, I, I know you're really excited about this story. Um, say something like, um, I want this event is only for so many minutes, and I wanna meet a few more people, so if you mind giving me your card and I can catch up and finish this story later, that'd be great being honest again about what your intentions are and why you kind of want to cut it short. They won't even be offended that way. Number 10, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. <laughs> this is where everybody still struggles with, even though every networking event keeps hounding this into us. Try to follow up while you're still with the person. Try to get uh, either the favorite way they like to be contacted, with that, whether that, that these days is text, email, phone calls. Find out what their favorite contact method is and then see if you can't set up a time to follow up with them right there in the same room. That'll save you a lot of work later too. A couple of quotes here I found interesting from the event. <clears throat> Pardon me. 
Success happens when you get good at bouncing back from failure. <laughs> that was a good quote. Another one I really liked was, though no one can back up and make a new, make a brand new start, anyone can start from now and make a brand new ending. And that's by Carl Bard. And I first learned about Dale Carnegie through, again, Tim Ferriss, who I follow. And he suggested reading the book, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. A brilliant book. And just to summarize what I learned from that book is how to, what you can do to keep yourself from being choked up or afraid of taking risks is to plan out the worst case scenario in your um, decision making. Decide what the worst case scenario is and then decide to live through that. Okay, so I'm going to go through the worst case scenario. I decide to invest in this company A, B, or C and I lose all my money. Okay, so where do I go from that point? And then once you can sort of settle your mind with living through the worst case scenario, you'll find out that that rarely happens. So you got nowhere to go but up. So that was a great book and I would suggest you reading it if you have time. I watched, I read it on Audible, which is a uh, audiobook software. So it's Dale Carnegie's how to stop worrying and start living. Oh, and then at the end of the event, they gave us this great way in how to start a conversation with anybody and not just a conversation starter, how to really go into depth to make a, a relationship or a connection with someone. Um, so first thing you're going to do is imagine these points in sort of a picture. So they had us close our eyes and then we have to think about, we had to think about a man in a suit at networking events you see lots of people in suits and on this suit someone the man has a name tag on the right side and it says hello my name is and on that name tag it says wow and now my memory is going to stop right there <laughs> no i'm kidding and then after thinking about that wow on the name tag i want you to also think about in his right hand he has an admit one ticket so a man in a suit has a name tag on his right side and says, hello, my name is Wow, and he's holding a admit one ticket. In his other hand, he is holding a globe. In the globe, wrapped around the globe is a gold medal, an Olympic gold medal. And on top of the, gold, on top of the globe is a um, red cross. Um, from the red cross... Think about he's wearing bright red flashy shoes and they say exit. So how do you use this as a networking event? So you're in a networking event, you have lots of people in suits. You want to find someone in the suit that you are attracted to. Attracted to in their physical appearance. They seem like the kind of person you want to do business with. And then you approach that person, you say, hello, my name is, and you introduce yourself. And then the wow on the name tag is to help you remember that to say something nice about the event that you just experienced, the conference, the workshop, whatever it is that you are attending together. So say something good about the event and then an admit one ticket. So you want to invite this person into more conversation. Um, if they seem like they want to continue, they will continue the conversation. If they don't, they'll say, okay, it was great to meet you and they'll move on. And then once you have that one ticket, you go to the globe, which represents, okay, you want to ask the person, what does your world look like? So you want to ask them questions and how they perceive the world, you know, and they'll go into stories about, oh, the economy sucks, or um, and they'll probably talk about some really negative stuff going on in their world. And then around that world, you have a medal. So this makes the conversation go from what's happening in their world to what are some of the successes you've had? and talk about some of the um, winnings that they've had in their life. From the gold medal, you're gonna go to the little red cross on top, and this is gonna say, how can I help you? So you wanna ask them, how can this relationship benefit each other? How can I be a friend for you? And this makes the relationship even stickier. And then from that conversation, you are going to do your exit strategy. You're gonna think about the red shoes that are lighting up, say exit, and you're gonna talk about something that will end the conversation for now and hopefully continue at a different time. So that was a wonderful, wonderful um, 
analogy that they did so I could remember how to have conversations. And having that imagery in my head, I was able to remember it <laughs> today. So <laughs> it's amazing how the brain works sometimes. Anyway, so that is the networking event I did at Dale Carnegie Training yesterday in Edmonton. Hello to John and Scott for joining me in my live video. I'm going to end this right now, but please leave a comment and share it with your friends. We'll see you later.